All right, guys. This is DJ Wolf Live here in the morning. Um, got a couple things on my mind today, as always. I, I was trying to get a couple stats about Felicity, Felicity Huffman, you know, the actress who decided to put her uh, not completely bright daughter into a high level college that she wasn't qualified for. And uh, of course, money she used to try to buy her way into it to bring up her, uh, my understanding, uh, test scores or something like that. But nevertheless, the woman's going to only get a combination of 14 days and 250 hours of community service and a fine. Now, what make that okay? You know? Because you know if Felicity Huffman was someone black and a well-known actress, she would have been probably facing probably about maybe two years in jail at least. At the say the least. And probably would have been doing about a year probation. Or something like that. And probably pay double the fine. You know, it just goes to show you how white people, uh, there's white privilege. People say there's no such thing as white privilege. There is such thing as white privilege. That proves it right there. You know, it's like, uh, I think, what's her name? Uh, had a DWI charge. And she got 15 days probation. I'm talking about uh, Paris Hilton. And Paris Hilton was talking about, oh, when I get out, if I get out, I'm going to do this and do that and do all these old programs. And she didn't do shit after she got out. She went back to doing the same bullshit she was doing uh, before she got locked up. So white privilege is something else, man. Now, here's the funny thing, though. If you're black, you know, and you and you uh, dot the I's and cross the T's or whatever, and you're out here doing your thing, you know, Black people seem, other black people seem to look at you differently. They look at you like, hey, hey you, what you doing with that nice car? Or what you doing with that nice house? Or what you doing with that nice job? When it comes to us, they look at it as unusual. When it comes to looking at white people doing it, that's the standard bearer. They don't question that we're coming white. They don't. They never do. They may talk about it behind their back, but they never question it. When it comes to black folks to do that, it's always a question because we are under a microscope. We are under uh, a stereotype that we can't achieve as high as everybody else. You know, unless we are doing something that's out the norm. White people do it out the norm. It's not a big deal because it's white privilege. But black people do do something that other black people normally don't do, which is try you know, you know, live the best life. And not let people keep them down, then that's a problem. I've experienced that a lot, man. I, was like, I don't understand that. You know, um, I experienced this in my entire life, and and someone continued to do so. You know, I remember I, I was going, I started going to church, man. I was getting criticized for that. You know, I wanted to play sports. I got criticized for that. You know, I wanted to do art in college. I got criticized for that. You know, I wanted to go to the military. Some people criticized me for that. I mean, it was, just, it was just always something in my life where people always want to do that. And I'm going to tell you, if you're black in this country, there's one thing you got to remember. You got to live your best life and not worry about what the other fucking people saying. You know, if you're doing something positive and you ain't hurt nobody, man, go out there and do it, man. That's what I say. Because at the while you get tired of people always trying to throw you in the bus for stuff that you that you're trying to do and live out your best dreams and all of that and, and do your thing you ain't hurting nobody and people always got something nasty to say about you I mean always not some of the time we're talking about always got something funky to say about you no matter what you do in life <laughs> you know and I was saying uh, on my last podcast, and I still feel that way. I mean, you know, like sometimes when I go, you know, certain places, like, like for example, you are. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm a. Uh, uh, if I go to a party or something like that, even with some people I know, uh, you always feel like you're a you're a lonely person in a large crowd. You know, and there's many times where I have felt that way. I mean, I felt that way in church uh, last few times I've been. You know, I, I do. 
you know, I'm, I'm involved in several organizations in my church, and still, I still feel the same way. I, I, I just feel like, wow, is that it? It's like, well, you know, I don't know. I just, it's, like I said, again, it's hard to describe, you know. But, I don't know. I know one thing I, I told somebody, I said, I'm, I'm not going to go out my way to, I go out, I, I will do what I need to do while I'm there, but I'm not going to be go out here and try to extend myself any more than I need to, because some people don't appreciate it. I talked about that in my last podcast, too. But getting back to Felicity Huffman and white privilege, because it seems like anytime white people get in trouble for anything, man, they always hush it down, brush it down, tone it down. When it comes to us, they always uh, flip it up, hype it up. Damn it. I was trying to beat that drum. It's going to take me all day to get the word. Uh, it beat, you know, it could go around. I don't feel like doing that. I would take it around this corner. Here. You know, but I, but I do feel that way. I feel like, you know, you be, be toned up. You know, we're toned up. They throw us up and put it out there what comes to us. It's always the same drama what comes to black people. You know. We always get messed with. <laughs> on everything. And my thing is, you gotta live your best life and don't go back to the fuck with niggas. Cause Negroes will, 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 will try to put you down more than anybody. They ain't doing nothing, so you ain't supposed to do nothing. You know. That's what it all comes down to. You ain't supposed to do that. They ain't doing nothing. So you ain't, you know, they want you to be just like them. They want you to be in the same way. You can't go out outside your box. You know. But everybody else can. Like I said, white people have been doing this for thousands of years. And you're never questioning them. But, you, but when it comes to us doing the same thing, you always question us. You know, good, bad, or indifferent. It doesn't matter. We're always stereotyped about being people who ain't doing what we're supposed to be doing. And we're always under a box about what we ain't doing. I've seen that a lot too. You know? And it, it just makes me sick. Um, that's probably the reason why I don't fool a lot of people. You know, and I admit to that. I I, I don't. I, I can't I can't stand it. I mean, I don't hate people per se, and I really don't. But you know, you get to a point sometimes where it just you're like, man, why am I doing this with y'all, man? I thought we was cool, you know. And like I said, I talked about my last podcast too. I mean, I got to a point, man, with people who I was, you know, down for, helped them out, and they turn around and screw me over or curse me. I was like, man, really? I was in your corner, and now you going to do this? You know, that's just crazy. It's insane. And I'm just to a point now, I don't deal with Negroes no more. I, I just can't. I just can't. I just won't. And then people in the, in the next minute look like, yo, why you ain't do this? What is this? Now, also, there was something that I saw about, talking about forgiveness. Although forgiveness is for you, it's the hardest thing to do, man. But. Some people think once you forgive them, you're supposed to start back a dialogue with that person. I said, no, I do not. If I forgive you, I'm going to forgive you and I'm going to move on. I'm not going to deal with you. I want no, so, no part of you. See, that's, the, that's how I forgive people. You know? I forgive and move on and not deal with you. Not go back to the well. Let's put it like this. I won't go back to deal with you. That's the kind of person I am. Especially if you did me really wrong, man. I said, you did me wrong to a point where I know even though I forgive you you are still not going to change but forgiveness is not about changing that person anyway to be honest it's about you getting past the hurt and the pain I said okay I forgive you you know it's a powerful structure within, within that that helps you with, uh, helps heal you it may not atone that person because you forgave them but it definitely it heals you. You know, because I've been in situations where I had to forgive somebody and it helped me. You know, it helped me a lot. It helped me deal with 
but in that case, it did help me deal with them personally because I had to. Certain people, I don't have to. If I forgive you, I'm moving away from. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just not going to deal with you because I learned my mistake from you. I had to. Sometimes you got you got got to move past the BS. You know, it hurts, but you have to. You know, there's some people now that I, I need to go ahead and just forgive and then move on and not deal with them. Because you're never going to change that person or persons if they're not willing to make amends for what they did, even if you forgive them. You can't change them. They have to change themselves. And if they're not willing to change, then you just, hey, move on. I forgive you. Okay? It's okay. And then I deal with That's the one thing about forgiveness I can honestly say, at least the, my, my terminology of it. Just before, because, before, just because you forgive somebody does not necessarily mean you got to deal with them ever again. You don't. You truly don't. As far as I'm concerned, you don't have to deal with that, with that person or person no more. Now, unless you have a specific obligation, even the family, you don't have to deal with them. Especially if they did you really wrong. You know. I know, I know this may, may sound a little controversial, but that's the way, you know, that's, that's the way it is sometimes, man. Some people, you know, you just, you, you, you just can't help. You do everything you can. Some you just can't help. They have to help themselves in the long run. You know, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. Forgiveness is more of like a self-help for yourself. You know. But get back to Felicity Huff and, and, and their white power structure. Because really, that's what it is. We make the laws, and we do what we want to do, and we say what we want to say, and we uh, oppose the law to whoever we want to, and whoever we don't, we can take it, and we can uh, size it down. And that's what they do. Am I forgiving them for doing that? Hell no. I'm not. Because they've been doing it for so damn long, you know, they, they, they continue to get away with it. I remember a situation, this is a true story. This is another great example of white privilege. I was in uh, Columbia, South Carolina when that shooting happened on the other side over in, uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about, uh, in, the, in the other side of uh, South Carolina. On the other end. I keep forgetting. I wonder why I can always keep forgetting the name of that city, the town where it happened in. But anyway, um, and my son was graduating from military training at the time. And it happened that night that we got there. The incident happened. Where the nine uh, abortions were murdered by Dilla Roof. And I think we were down there for a few days. Dilla Roof was captured, I, I think, like the next day or two. And then I saw him on TV with the judge. And the judge was facing the, uh, the victims the family members were murdered and he sat there and this is no joke he sat there and told those family members before I uh, go through the uh, uh, indictment phase you guys will forgive him yeah the judge actually said that I'm like what right does the, the, what fucking right does the judge have to be telling a bunch of uh, 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 family members of victims who were murdered in cold blood by this white guy. And the only thing they did was to serve God in the house of the Lord. What right did they have to do that? To tell them, oh, you must forgive before I, I give out this uh, indictment. Forgive me what I'm going to say. Get the fuck out of here. Because that's bullshit. I'm, I'm sorry. It's complete BS. It is. Yeah. He had no right to impose his personal feeling about that. He actually said that. Mm -hmm. I was pissed when I heard that because I don't think he had no right to impose his, his, his you know, he, 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 wanted, he wanted him to down, you know, to, to tone it down against this white guy. 
the white boy for murdering black people. Like that was okay. Now that was not okay. They had every right to be angry. And I think I think a number of them did. He was calling out uh, because of the religion. You know, using against him, saying you must forgive, you must go for you know. And that, and as far as I'm concerned, in, in that case, all that you can forgive. I, and I even heard a pastor say the same thing. He said, "Yeah, they they did do that." And we must do that. I don't forget that guy for doing that, mess. In the case for him, God will forgive, and I don't. Un, 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 I said, unless he, un, and, I, and I even said it myself. I said in another podcast, unless this boy paid for the crime that he did, and I mean literally pay for it, even if it means death. Unless Dylan Roof paid for the crime, even in death, I will never forgive him. Because white privilege is going to always look out for his ass. They're going to always look out for him. Yeah. And they already have. Look, look at uh, George Zimmer. This son um, bitch is still walking the streets. And he had did crimes for white people since he murdered Trayvon Martin. Yes, I said it because he did. You know, walking out scot-free. Evidence. And, 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 the, and, and the state a minute evidence that would have got him locked up on purpose. Including the audio that would have definitely convicted him from a 911 call by him. Yeah. Tell me, don't tell me white privilege don't exist. White privilege does exist. But when it comes to uh, black families trying to do better, they don't want that to exist. There are black people don't even want to acknowledge it. When you're doing when you're doing good, they don't want to acknowledge that. I remember, like I said, when I lived at home in Cleveland, off on Twenty Third Street, it's period. And uh, we had moved into a house in 1974, a house that my mother still lives in today. And uh, my dad had a garage built. He bought a new car. We moved in there and did our thing. And a couple of neighbors had, you know, a little, they were jealous. Of, and, and you could see, it was, they were, some of them were very jealous. I don't know why. They were. You know, he had a good job. You know, took care of his family. Took real good care of his family. And a couple of hey, big time, you know, say all kind of goofy shit. Niggas would rather see white people do it than they see your own people do it. And I'm going through some of the same stuff myself. Well, I have gone through some of the same stuff myself over the last 30 years almost. It's crazy. You know, I remember I bought my first house years ago myself. And people were doing the same thing. I'm like, really? And I was 27 then. And I had... Uh, in law saying a little nasty shit to me. Hey, really? You think that's my responsibility to move our family friend of y'all into my house? No, it's not. Not my responsibility. No. I, I told him no. I said, no, not that. They got upset about that. Yeah. I buy a house, move everybody and cousin them up, man. My house wasn't that big anyway. It was about, it, it actually, it wasn't a very big house. You know. And then half y'all ain't gonna pay for it anyway. That's another story. But it's just the fact that when it comes to us, we, we like to throw each other in the bus and talk, 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 smack to each other no matter what, what you're doing. You know. Which is why I don't deal with a lot of bands. Like I said, uh, but if you're white, you got that privilege no matter what. You could be wrong as wrong as all get out, and you'll still be beat the rap. And they continue to do the same mess. And it's not right. You know? 
Look at Trump. Yeah, I say it. He says whatever the fuck he want to say. And he never gets called out for anything he says. Not even the media. The media kind of like, you know, oh well, you know. It's like an oh well attitude about it. Yeah. They don't care. It's like it's not even a big deal though. I didn't realize what a red light right there. Why they put a red light right there? <laughs> oh, I, okay. I, now I know why. But it's crazy. It's, it's absolutely insane. It's insane. I, I just, I just shake my head. I just shake my freaking head. This is nuts. Until we change that mentality, I doubt. Until we change that mentality about us looking, you know, like, you know, putting people, throwing people under the bus for trying to do right. Until you start calling out uh, uh, white privilege for, for getting the extra boost for something they shouldn't be getting no boost for or getting away with murder, literally, when they shouldn't be. Until that bullshit get called out and get uh, uh, not only re-examined but restructured in, in our in our justice system, we're gonna be still singing that song and dance, and we're gonna still be dealing with the same bullshit, which is called I affectionately call it the cycle of bullshit or cycle of BS for short, because the cycle of BS is part of that uh, system. Uh, the system of white privilege, aka white supremacy, because that's all this is. Mm-hmm. White supremacy and, 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 and uh, white privilege goes hand in hand. It's, it's a structured, uh, systematic uh, system where they actually try to uh, put you in the uh, in, a, in the in the box. You know, keep the foot on your neck. You know, and and, stereo, and and allow you your own people to stereotype you. On top of all of that, none of that helps us. I said until we uh, until we have a a a, 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 a justice system that's going to be fair and balanced to each and every person in this country. And until we, the mindset is changed, not only with white people, but our own people. I stop thinking that bourgeoisie uh, or what I call a uh, coonish type of thought process. You know, it's going to always be that way. It's ridiculous. It's going to always be that way. All right, guys, this is DJ Wolf, and I'm out.